just, uh, man, all I can say is have a week, guys. You know, I think that was Kevin's first 10,000 and uh, Mark, uh, his first 20,000. And if I'm not mistaken, he hit his goal. So uh, that he was shooting for, at least I, you know, if my, if my numbers add up right. But uh, other than that, guys, uh, no, man, just uh, everything's going great. Um, you know, got some new folks that are going through the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, going through the process. So got three people taking their tests May 7th. And, uh, you know, I guess since that, uh, uh, and shout out to uh, uh, Renee Barker for, uh, well, I'm just going to save that for Braden. But anyway, and then, of course, you know, my daughter, she she wrote for the first time this week. So shout out to her as well. So anyway, that's what I got, my man. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Tim. Appreciate you and uh, everything you're doing. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know, not bragging by any stretch of imagination, uh, we were asked to go to, um, Brad's was asked to go to um, Boca Raton a couple months ago, had a great experience there. The very next month, Tim was asked to go, um, was it probably two months ago, Brad? I can't believe you've been here this long. You've been here almost as long as I've been here. It's crazy. Um, and then uh, we just were asked, um, Todd, myself, uh, Adam Yetter, uh, some of these guys you might know, and then uh, uh, one other team person, uh, Burrell, Nick Burrell. We're all we're all asked to go to um, Vegas, or and we're going to be interviewing with um, the big dog, if you will, Mr. Andrew Taylor. So should be a lot of fun. I guarantee you guys, it's coming. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, you're going to be asked to go, especially Mark with what you're doing, uh, Braden, what you're doing. You guys are when we get on there, I'm going to be giving a lot of plugs to you guys because you guys are the ones that are doing the work. So when it comes out, you guys will see it. Um, you know, we'll be very well represented there. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swing to Mark. Mark, any good news you'd like to share for yourself as your team starts to build? Yeah, uh, my first recruit got his first sale on Monday, uh, Chad Callis. He, uh, he's an entrepreneur as well. He's got a couple other businesses. He runs a couple of durable, durable medical goods equipment companies, on his. but he's seen the opportunity here. And I didn't really recruit him. I told him what I was doing back in January, and he just kind of followed me and started asking more about it. And uh, He's going to do great. Um, he's bringing a lot of uh, ideas in, in the term, in the form of lead generation. Uh, in the business he's in, he's spending ten or 15000 a week on leads. So what we spend is nothing to him. <laughs> uh, but he's got some great ideas on some mortgage uh, protection uh, strategies that we're going to try uh, here with our little group. And as those develop and if we get some success, I'll start sharing those with you guys. So to me, that's that's my biggest news is I have a great new team member and he he got his first sale. Uh, yeah, I had a good week. Uh, it was fun. I did a little road trip this week, a um, little traveling last week as well. Um, I'm only getting in front of people two or three days a week right now um, with other stuff I got going on. But I'm hoping uh, I can get out four and five days a week here pretty soon. Um, we use an appointment setter. Uh, thanks to Brian Brickhouse. Um, her name's Crystal, and she does a fantastic job. Uh, she just interviewed two more this week. Uh, one who actually was one of my clients last week that got turned down by two carriers, but in the course of the conversation, uh, she let me know that she's a professional appointment setter and had just been laid off. So we're uh, actually trying to put uh, a client to work for us, uh, doing some dialing for us. Um, I believe in delegating that stuff myself just because I've got other stuff going on. Uh, I know it's not the right fit for everybody, but it's working for me because it allows me to get out two, three days a week and hopefully four or five once we get a few more on board. So, um, you know, and Crystal's handled all that for me. We are actually, uh, she is, uh, checking out some voiceover IP systems. We've got to get our dialing down better. We're starting to get flagged as spam and whatnot on some of our uh, system. So we're looking at getting a more robust professional system in place. We're probably going to look at phone burner as well, of course. Uh, just trying to uh, put money back into the business. I mean, we're going to hire people. We're buying equipment, we're buying software. Uh, we're going to do this right so that as we bring team members on, we can they can hit the ground running. Because uh, right now, the folks I'm recruiting have other stuff going on. They're going to come in part time. So if I can help them set a few appointments and get them in the field and have success the first week. I think that's going to help us all. That's fantastic. And uh, just, man, my hat's off to you. You're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. I know you've owned other companies and businesses, so you have that business acumen. 
and it shows and you're going to blow up here. You can see, I mean, look what Tim's doing. Tim's, you guys do probably 65, 70% of our business every single week in the strongest leg we have right now, but that will change. I can assure you that. And um, I want to add to what, what Mark was saying. As we continue to build and we continue to grow, what's going to happen is the resources that we get from you guys are going to be put back into the business in way of leads. Yes, you guys are going to continue to have to buy leads. That's the business. But people that are helping grow the business are going to get rewarded for that with more leads. We're going to be ready to start putting some programs into place. I wish you guys, all you guys, to be a part of our Sunday meeting. But the things that are getting ready to come to help you guys, just little incentives, you know, 500, 250, 100 bucks, you know, to be able to get leads and just those kind of things and apparel. Uh, it keeps things fun. It keeps it light, but it keeps you guys moving. It keeps things positive, positive and it keeps the environment going. So Mark, I'm glad you mentioned that stuff. Thank you for your transparency. Cause not a lot of people will say, Oh, I have a dialer. I'm working with some dialers right now. I'm probably going to step back and start doing the majority of my own dialing. Cause right now I'm running around over St. Louis with appointments that they're setting that aren't real appointments. So that's a whole nother conversation. And uh, congratulations to you, Mark, which we'll get to that here in just a second. All right, Jeremiah, you're up my friend. Probably caught him chasing the kids around the house or something. All right, Jeremiah, three, two, one. Brad, you're up. <laughs> if Jeremiah hops in, I'll let him back in, of course. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, same thing. Just wanted to echo uh, a lot of what Tim and Mark said uh, previously, which is great. Seeing this team grow, um, seeing these things happen, people putting the processes in, in place. And um, I know, Corey, you won't take a lot of credit, but you should. Uh, he, he's a, a great friend, uh, a great person to work with. And um, I, I, I shouldn't even say work for because it's really more work with because we are all alongside of each other. And that's kind of the beautiful part. Um, looking back and, and some of you guys know my brief history, but uh, transitioned into this industry from not being in the, in the insurance industry. Um, and it's just been a great family, uh, work family um, of, of great people. So I uh, just want to echo that same thing and looking forward to get back out in the field. I had to take some uh, time off to quarantine because somebody in my family had uh, tested positive. So <laughs> I had a good, I had a good, a good, good three weeks in a row. And then I had to go, uh, had to quarantine myself. I'm, I'm good. All, all's good here. Uh, everybody's fine. So just wanted to, uh, yeah, can't wait, can't wait to get back out there and get going. And Mark, uh, congratulations. I think probably his first $15,000 a week, possibly. And then you just blew right by that, right by that and went all the way up to 20. So, <laughs> which is yeah, it's pretty nice. unreal to say that somebody, you know, can, can do, and, and Marco, you know, a lot of the people saying the same thing. It doesn't take anything special, just a little yeah. bit of work, a little bit of persistency. There's no magic here. Um, and anybody, you know, really anybody has the opportunity equally. So it's, it's nice to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, Brad. And uh, I'll echo that as well. I mean, just Mark just mentioned, I mean, the guy wrote, <laughs> again, just had another massive week with two or three weeks, two or three days in the field. And I'll challenge you guys with this, even whether you're on our team or not, we're all on the FFL team. And I appreciate you saying what you said, Brad. I appreciate you a great friend and uh, as well, but I guess we're gonna have to wait on lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good now. No yeah, I, I, no I'm good. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to go lunch and catch up. And I'm like, oh, maybe not. Today's, um, today's my wait. last day. So yeah, we're good. Oh, fantastic. We'll yeah. go next week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's one of those things, guys. I mean, I was fortunate and blessed enough to be able to write 10K last week. And I was only in the field two days myself because of all the administrative stuff that, you know, that we have going on behind the scenes. And it's awesome to be able to go out and I mean, where else can you go and make 10 grand in a matter of a couple of days. You just can't. So I'll challenge you guys with this. And I'm being positive when I say this. And I say this to our leadership team all the time. Are you doing enough? Are you taking the most advantage of this opportunity that you can? Are you, if you can't, uh, whoever that is, if you'd mute yourself, that'd be fantastic. Um, you know, are you doing enough? Are you doing the things that you need to do? Like, you know, if you're getting beat up on the phones, it happens to all of us. I get hung up on, I get cussed out too. But it's that family that you go out and you sit down with and you help them. You got to see the stories. You see the things that happen. We focus more, I think, sometimes on the negative side of the people that we got hung or we went to the, we set the appointment, we got there, we get porch and those kind of things, as opposed to the people that we're able to help, right? Pretty simple stuff. All right. Let me see if I missed anybody. Got all of them there. I don't see Braden on, so I'm going to keep it moving. All right. So I'm going to go through the good news, brother. We got a lot of it. So if you guys see somebody pop up on the screen, let me know. I don't, she's still having issues. Uh, trying to get in. But from there, 
uh, she, asked if she can send me this slideshow. Um, I really want her to do this. If not, we'll have her on next week. And then we'll swing back to Brad to go through. Um, Jeremiah had a great idea about moving some things around with our training so we don't put you guys to sleep. And it was a good one. So we're going to go ahead and go into good news. And then uh, Brad looks like we'll be swinging back to you after that. And then we'll conclude the meeting. All right. Here goes nothing. Let's share my screen. If I get kicked out for whatever strange reason, I know it's been doing this. I updated my um, updated everything and it seems to be working better now. Do you guys see my screen? Yes. Somebody yes. Else? Thank you. Super appreciate it. So very top there, you can see Wednesdays. That will be installed back again this week coming up. Uh, Wednesday will be our recruiting training. So the recruiting process has been morphed and modified. We're still going through it, trying to perfect it. So for those of you guys that want to grow a team, or maybe you're interested in growing a team, no one here will force you to do it. We just want to make sure you have the tools and the understanding of how to do it. Obviously, you guys are on here today. We're going to hear Brad talk about the LIFE acronym. If you guys aren't using this, I'm telling you, you're, you're first of all, you're not helping the client properly, my opinion. Second of all, not only are you not helping the client properly, but you're probably not providing them as much benefit that they would need. And if you're doing the LIFE acronym, which Brad is going to show us here in a little bit, what ends up happening is they see how much coverage they need. It's not you how much you're telling them they need. Most of us and all of us do it. Hey, how much coverage do you think? Oh, I need 100,000. And we just start looking up quotes for 100 grand instead of asking the questions why they need it. If they say they need 100, they probably really need 250 to three, if not more. Um, and then if Jenny can't get on, she's still having some issues. We'll have her on next week to talk, to talk about Lift Local. But if nothing else, I can go, uh, cover it a little bit as well. Then tomorrow, uh, for those of us that are new um, or those of us that want maybe a little bit of a refresher for some things, we'll be covering the CRM in detail. Uh, and you can ask whatever questions you want. I can slow down, back up, do whatever. We'll go over our resource site, um, which the name has changed for those of you guys that are using it. It is now FFL Genesis. And I'm going to cover that here in a second, what just happened with our name. Pretty cool story, by the way, too, which I'll tell you guys. Uh, we'll cover compensation. And I want to thank uh, Kathy Libra. <clears throat> I've been trying to get my hands on some stuff from Americo that really breaks down how we get paid. I've asked multiple times. She makes one phone call and gets it. So, Kathy, I guess you're better smarter than me. Uh, we'll cover phone burner. I'll go into phone burner in a little bit of detail so you can see it. We'll cover Slack, kind of like we did this morning, but really how to move through it. Because I know sometimes some of you guys don't want to ask in public, which is okay. I'll help through that process. I'll go over a phone script, like how I what I do on my phone script, and I'll show you guys the one I use, even though there's tons of them out there. I'll also show you on FFL Go where to find those things at. We'll cover the Aetna application and then the AIG application tomorrow, and then it'll be open for them. So it'll be a jam-packed session tomorrow for sure. Um, this covers, uh, you guys see me post this uh, from time to time, uh, see me post this on Slack just to keep you guys informed of what's going on with the meetings. And here we go into the major recognition. So it's a lot, guys, but I think it's warranted. I think it's necessary to give the recognition. You guys know how I feel about that. So we're going to start at the uh, proverbial bottom of the list. We now have I believe 15 people on the uh, 15 people on track right now, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, this started with obviously just a couple people, Tim and I, and I, and now we have literally 15 people that are on strings. So at the uh, when I say bottom, I'm just talking about in reference to numbers. So Miss Christy Polsack is two weeks. Carrie is two weeks. Therese Basie is two weeks. I am at two weeks. Michelle Williams doing a fantastic job at part time, three weeks. Kevin Gilbert is really starting to come out of his shell <clears throat> at his first $10,000 week, three weeks. John Hall, four weeks, and growing, recruiting, training, and just doing all kinds of stuff. Mr. Drobny there is four weeks. Denise Hacker, five weeks, doing a great job. Trent Moses, 10 weeks in a row that he's protected a family. Mr. Tim Bilo, this is his, uh, actually, officially his longest string. He was on a nine week before. This is his longest string now of 10 weeks, so he'll obviously be a king of string coming up here very soon. Mr. Shearman, that same thing. Congratulations, Brad, 11 weeks in a row. Mark at 14 weeks in a row. And I'm gonna show you guys what we got here for Mark as well. Same thing we did with Braden last week. And then we got uh, Mr. Braden Cox at 15 weeks in a row in reference to our strings. Our top five for the month. Uh, we'll start, we'll start there with number five. This is uh, issue paid so far for the month. Now, let's take a step back here. Brad just mentioned just a few moments ago that he's really been out of the field for a couple of weeks because of COVID. And he's still done 94-16. Think about that for a second. Now, I don't mean this to be negative, And I, nothing I say on here is ever meant to be negative. If you're not doing at least 10,000, I mean, there's just no reason somebody shouldn't be, even part-time, shouldn't be doing at least 10,000 a month. 
it shows you you're not doing enough. You're not making enough dials. You're not putting yourself in enough uncomfortable activity to get yourself to get that 1% better every single time you're out there. So Brad is number five with 9416. Kevin Gilbert, 11,578. That is a $10,157 improvement over March. And he's a bronze level producer now for the month. Tim Bilo, 18,625, up 2510 over the last month. Think about that. He's still growing and he's been here the longest. Mark Williams, I don't even know what to say about you, Mark. You're just uh, you're an animal. And I mean that in the best way possible. $24,518 issue paid for the month of April. That is 17,822% uh, increase in premium. And he's a gold level producer for April, approaching the next level. And then we got Mr. Brayton there, number two, <clears throat> excuse me, overall in all of the velocity, he's up $21,304 over March. He's a platinum level producer for the month of April. Again, I will put this stuff out there on um, Slack so you guys can see these. I want to consistently make sure you guys are seeing these things so you're starting to understand where you're at as you're building your business. And as people come on uh, next to you, your teammates come on, you have an understanding of how to explain this stuff. Another outstanding week last week, not a record week, but 78,430 is very, very solid. Uh, made us, I think, number six or seven, I believe, in all of Velocity. And Velocity is not only one of the biggest, but it is still the fastest growing agency in all of uh, Family First. So if you think about that and we're, and we're moving at that level, just think of where we'll be in a couple months. Again, we had another record day, 27,554 uh, with over 59 families protected, which is another record for us as well. So every single week, we just keep breaking records. I guess records are meant to be broken. And not that we're doing it to break the records. It just happens because you guys are in the activities. Top five issue paid. I already went over this. You guys will see that here on Slack here in just a little bit. And then top five uh, from last week submitted. I think this is what Brad was talking about with uh, for Mr. Williams here. So Tim, 4896 coming to number five spot with five families protected last week. Uh, just warms my heart every time I see Mariana's name. But uh, that's Tim's daughter for, the, for those of you guys that don't oh. know. $6,302. I echo that, Rick. $6,302. She protected three families last week. Uh, myself, I stepped over the $10,000 mark again last week. Very excited to do that. Mm -hmm. Kevin Gilbert, $14,593 with nine families protected. And then we got Mr. Mark Williams, again, just absolutely killing this thing. $22,679, 15 families protected. And I'm not even putting words in his mouth. He was only in the field two to three days last week. So that I will challenge you guys again. You're not doing enough. I'm telling you, we should have a ton of $10,000 riders every single week if we do the work. All right. So last week, we mentioned uh, where we were last week, 78,430. Again, down at the bottom there, we had 19 producers, which was a record for us last week, which I'll cover here in a second. We got John Hall at 580, Michelle Williams, 628. We had Chad that wrote his first application, which is fantastic, uh, $672. Uh, Mr. Matt there, he's in Florida with Kevin Gilbert, 705, writes his first step. Sharice Basie hits the board. Brad Shearman, again, 864. Kim Palmer. $968 writes her first staff. Christy Polsack, again, missed consistency there, $1,013. Appreciate your stories, Christy. It makes me laugh. I got to be honest with you. So keep them coming. Uh, Renee Barker gets her first application at 1537, protecting a family. Miss Denise Hacker, 1589. Very really proud of what you're doing, Denise. Text two families last week. Mr. Braden Cock, 1898, says he had a terrible week. I'd love to have a terrible week and make $2,000, right? Trent Moses, again, uh, with uh, I think he's 10 weeks in a row on the string, 1908. Kerry Thompson, 1982. Jeremiah Drowney, $4,801 with five families protected. Mr. Tim Below, $4,896 coming in the number five spot. We mentioned Miss Mariana. She's not on, guys, because it's like five o'clock in the morning where she's at. So I get it. And then uh, we got Mr. Kevin Gilbert at $1,493, nine families protected. And again, Mark, the top spot. $22,679. Last couple of things here before we uh, we swing to Brad, and I want to tell you guys a really quick story, which I know you'll appreciate. Rick, it's the one I told you yesterday. And Kathy, I know I, I told you as well. So um, 59 families protected last week is a record. Our record day, uh, 27,554. And actually, we broke the same record from last Wednesday, which is pretty crazy. 19 submitting agents is a record, and we had five new agents protect families last week for the first time. So we just continue to build. Yesterday, 
Uh, some say it was would be a slow day. I don't care about that. We protect families when we uh, when we need to. So Braden was the only one that uh, hit the board, pushed himself to that uh, 15 week mark in reference to the string. So before I give Brad the uh, the floor here, I'm gonna tell you guys a really really quick story. You guys will appreciate this. I, I hope you will anyway. So I submitted the name literally, uh, and, and Amy was I was very fortunate enough to have her help with it. But uh, oh my God, Mariana's on. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you're here girl so we put everybody else that's not on here to shame that's not oh don't worry I, i've been i wouldn't miss it for the world <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your effort we really do yeah i know plus your dad probably come up there and get you anyway but so right. you guys hopefully you'll appreciate this story and then brad i'm going to swing to you so it gives me chills every time i tell the story so i've been trying to and with the leadership i've asked or amy's help like what we, we have to come up with something okay premier was gone i knew it was gone anyway but building teams before you you have to have something for people to attach yourself to right so we had premiere we get ready we go over the hundred thousand dollar mark you have to submit a name and the name has to be approved well everything we submitted either sounded like something already here or it was a company that was already in the in the industry that we couldn't use right so i'm in the same spot i'm in right now i'm sitting here working late uh, the other night and i'm sitting here and i'm working and everything and i'm like look Every name I've submitted has been declined. So, you know what? So I just started praying. God, just put the name, whatever it's supposed to be. Just put it in my head. Tell me what it is. I'm going to submit it. And whatever it is, is what it's going to be. I'm over it. Like, I was actually starting to get pissed, believe it or not. About 15 minutes later, something says, look up the books of the Bible. I go to Google. I type in books of the Bible. And the first name in the 66 books of the Bible was Genesis, Genesis. which means the beginning. So that's where Genesis came from. And that's why we're now FFL Genesis. So from that standpoint, everything, all of our Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, probably getting ready to start a TikTok reluctantly, uh, but it's a great marketing. So it's probably one of the fastest marketing tools in the country right now for free. Um, everything is going to be FFL Genesis, everything, um, including our resource website, which we've just rebranded. Thanks for you guys' help. We just rebranded it and it is now FFL Genesis as well. Now you guys will start to see the PDFs and all that kind of stuff out there from a resource standpoint, which will be coming here within the next week. Any questions before we swing over to Mr. Brad? All right, floor is yours, Brad. Thanks, Rick. All right, Corey, you wanna turn over? I'm gonna share some pictures. Oh, cool. walk, yeah. walk through some of this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll work out for me. Yeah, it should, let me see here. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they just, literally just modify this thing. Let me see All if right. I can give you spotlight everyone, make the host. You should be good, Brad. Okay, let me see if I can. All right, can, uh, can everybody see my screen yep. okay? We got okay. you, yep. All right, Yeah. <clears throat> good deal. So um, don't, don't look too, too much at this just yet. Um, what I'm gonna do is talk first and then kind of go through what this looks like and all this. So uh, my, uh, you know, education for today is, uh, it's called the, the life approach, L-I-F-E. You can see that on the uh, back of the piece of paper that I've written on. Um, basically what it is, is it breaks down, like Corey was mentioning, what, what quantity and how much insurance somebody really should be shopping for. Um, you know, we'll go into kind of how that works, but uh, there's a nice, a really nice YouTube um, presentation, uh, Grady Polsack, and actually a guy here locally, Tim Nolan, went through this. Uh, it's about a 10 minute quick, quick YouTube. If you just YouTube L-I-F-E, uh, Family First Life, you'll, it'll, it'll come right up. Um, and it's definitely worth watching. And it'll give you full context about what, uh, what this really looks like. So uh, for me, this is not only a way to make sure that somebody's getting enough insurance or the right amount of insurance, but it's also a way to keep control in the home and, uh, and really guide somebody through the right uh, process. And not only does it improve that, it improves your professional approach to all this too. So it really is, it's not perfect. I'm not saying that. Uh, it's helped me. My average uh, annual premium went from right around eight or $900 to around $1,700. So almost doubled um, my annual premium uh, for each family. And it, and it really gave me more, much more confidence too in, uh, in getting them the right coverage that they're really looking for. So 
basically what I do first, um, obviously we go through the, uh, the credibility or uh, worksheet here. Many of you guys have seen this, um, you know, don't, don't copy somebody's personal information down. Of course, we can keep that private, but just wanted to share with you what I, what I just do is I go through, I go through that really quick, uh, go through all the things you can see I've, you know, cr crossed out heart attack, stroke, et cetera. I, I ask all those questions. Um, these people were younger. They didn't have any IRA 401k stuff or, uh, and they, they didn't, they did have some coverage through work, but that was about it. So, um, anyway, what we started discussing, as soon as I go through this part, get their health and get an idea, then I go into, uh, the life approach. So what I do is I just flip that same piece of paper over and start writing on the back. Um, some people have more, you know, professional cleaner approaches, but I like this. I like, I like handwriting things down. So what I do is I write L-I-F-E on that uh, left side of the paper. Uh, the L is for liabilities, <laughs> loans, that sort of things, um, debts. So what you're seeing there is that, uh, I'm gonna let somebody in here. Okay, uh, what you're seeing is the L for liabilities. I is for income replacement. F is for final expenses. Uh, e is for any extra education, kind of legacy type of things. So what we came up with, uh, just to break this down, that 126 was the remaining balance of their mortgage. The 48, Sorry, Brad, what was the for? What's the E is for extra or education or legacy, um, and it kind of breaks that down in the video too. So, uh, but they had uh, that 126 was the remaining balance of their mortgage. 48,000. They actually had a second uh, home that they used as a rental or revenue generating property, but we put that in there because if something happened, they'd still be responsible for that. Uh, they had two cars, one at 14 and one at 8,000. And then they had 13,000 uh, in um, just some kind of business loans uh, that they did uh, on the side. So again, we put that all together. The remaining loan balance or liability balance for them was right around 209,000, total that all up. Uh, income replacement is the next line down. Um, the gentleman I work, was working with, he made roughly about 90,000. She was making about 36,000. So what we did is I said, look how much, you know, and this is really where things can vary quite a bit. Um, if something happened to one of you, how long do you need the other person's income to last? Obviously for her, she needs his income to last quite a bit because it's a, a much larger amount just in the example I was given. If the roles were reversed, he would need her income if she was making more money, et cetera. So they had two little kids and whatnot. And um, anyway, we totaled up their incomes together. They both agreed that, you know, somewhere around 12,000, they were young. They wanted to be cremated, but we, you know, there's some great forecasting tools out there uh, to roughly help you with the final expense costs. Uh, they both were okay with cremation right now. So put them both down for 12,000 uh, and basically totaled all of that up and got to about 359,000 of life insurance. Now that is not per person. Uh, that in this situation, that was collectively between him and her. All right, so I said, hey, look, do you both need $359,000 of life insurance? Probably not, but collectively we need to be around that number. And they both understood they were the numbers that, those are the numbers that they gave me. I didn't make any of this up. I just walked through it uh, nice and simple with them. Um, you know, they didn't necessarily have any, you know, edu education or extra legacy stuff that they wanted to worry about right now, but they understood that uh, that might that might come down the road. So we left a, a blank space for that. And then I just basically went through, they were both, you know, young, healthy, really no, no significant health issues, et cetera. Uh, so I knew the cashback option was, was going to um, be a good opportunity with Americo for them. They liked the opportunity of if they didn't use it, they got all the money back and then they would use that. Uh, money at the end, either to pay off any additional debts or just use it as their uh, whole life insurance policy as it would accumulate for both of them. They were both the same price They were because they were both about the same age. Um, it was going to accumulate uh, if they took the, you know, 200,000 at 133 a month, it was going to accumulate to about, uh, I want to say around $50,000 of cash back roughly for them at the end. So um, again, that's just kind of what what I do nice and simple, it takes less than 10 minutes. Um, and I just walk them through. And this has really allowed me to keep control. It makes them feel good because they're giving you the numbers. It makes us feel good as, as agents 
because we're able to represent what they're looking for. And then we make recommendations based on those numbers. And, and what I do is I just use it as a base number and I tell them, you know, if it was, if it was Alan and Catherine sitting in front of me, hey, this is just a base number. It gives us an idea of where we should be looking. If we need to adjust based on price, uh, then we can adjust based on price, but at least this gives you an idea. And, uh, and so that, get, you know, that just uh, allows them the opportunity to, to know what they're looking at. Um, hopefully you guys got some good notes out of that. I don't want to run into it too long, but hey, that YouTube. Hey, Brad, do me, do me a favor. That, first yeah, of all, that ahead. was, I mean, I couldn't have been more spot on. Can you go, can you share, put your screen back up there? Yep. Uh, I want to show, there was a couple questions, first of all, and two, I want to point out a couple of things that were That's, that was actually, to me, per, actually, and I know Tim was doing his on an iPad. This is actually better. Uh, what Brad is talking about, if you go to, if you go into YouTube and you type in LIFE and FFL or Tim Nolan will come up. It's also on our website uh, with him and Grady Polson. If you go on our website, FFL uh, Genesis, which we just changed it, scroll down the page, you'll it actually says Tim Nolan, Grady Polston on it. Yeah, you scroll for about seven minutes and thirty two <laughs> seconds in there, and he actually start he does an illustration on his iPad. But this is much more effective, and here's why: what Tim doesn't have an opportunity to do on, on that presentation with Grady. All Brad's doing, for those of you guys who don't understand, he's just asking the question. So the first one is loans. Any outstanding loans that they have, as Brad mentioned car payments, credit cards, anything that's going to be a financial detriment to that other person if they, when their significant other passes, right? The other one is income. That's what I stands for. How much do you make? So he makes 90, she makes 36. And then you can see he just totaled them up. And you're doing this right in front of them. Right there. The F, somebody asked on there what the F is, that's final expense. What do you have that's life insurance or acts like life insurance that will protect one or the other when you pass? And then the last one is education. So Brad, uh, first, first of all, fantastic. Two things, um, and I prefer you to explain it other than me because I, I know what you're, you're doing here. Um, the first thing is the E. If you were talking to someone, an older couple, mm -hmm. okay, their kids are gone. Let's just say their kids are gone. They're empty nesters. We're gonna call them older. Yep. And the education piece, how would you handle that? Because I yeah. always ask the question no matter what. Yeah, I mean, too. And it doesn't have to be in this situation. It was a mortgage protection type of opportunity but it doesn't have to be. Let's say somebody's retired and they don't have any really loans left. They've paid off all of their debts. They're in, they're you know, renting an apartment or whatever that looks like. They've paid off their house. The income replacement, um, I would just skip, I would just pass the loan portion of things or the liability portion of things up unless they really have, you know, even if they have four or $5,000 in a car left, put it on there. Even if that's their only loan or liability, put it on there anyway. Again, you can always dial back. Um, and then the income replacement, if it's just a single person, then obviously there's no need for income replacement unless that person is providing money to somebody else. So, you know, let's say the wife is just remaining. She's, she doesn't have really any debts, which is great. Um, you know, final expenses. Uh, maybe she even says, hey, I've paid for a lot of my burial, funeral, et cetera. I know there's going to be some costs that I haven't covered yet. Great. We estimate those between three and $5,000 that will be remaining if you're on the burial side. If you're on the cremation side, you're looking between two and 4,000, even if they've prepaid for a lot of things. There's just processing fees, et cetera, that go into that final expense cost. And they understand that. They know. Um, even if they think they've got 100% of it covered, they're you know, retired military veteran, et cetera, there are cost affiliated. Yes. Um, so yes. then, you know, then they, then we talk about the, the education legacy uh, product and, you know, this is where kind of building up that rapport initially uh, really goes a long way. Uh, maybe it's kids, grandkids, et cetera. And uh, she's got, she's got good income and she doesn't have a lot of money out and she's got a lot of money each month that she's leaving, you know, just in a savings account or whatever. And I basically spin it to, Hey, let's leverage the life insurance company's money against your money. And this is the terminology that I like to use with that is you say, Hey, look, you've got roughly $1,200 a month that you're comfortably, comfortably saving uh, for a couple hundred of that we could turn that money into much bigger money for your kids or grandkids or whoever that, uh, that you maybe look to leave behind. Is that something that you would be interested in? And she said, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to leave my kids. You know, if I could leave them 10,000 each, I've got three kids. Great. Um, so I would put, 
that 30,000 into that extra education legacy line there that I've left blank in this situation. So um, yes, there are basically, I call it three different types of appointments with this life approach. The mortgage um, protection, this is, that's what you're seeing here. A final expense sit down, which is kind of what I described. Maybe there's two of them, maybe there's just one, one remaining. Um, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot on the liability side, you might. The income replacement probably isn't gonna be a big deal because there's just one of them. They're not relying on the other person's income if they went. And then the final expense portion and then the extra legacy education portion of things. And so I wanted you guys, thank you for going over that again, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> again, a lot of times when you see trainings on this, and I'm, trust me, you will. When you see trainings like this on YouTube, they're gonna position this as mortgage protection. You wanna use this with mortgage protection. Get in the habit of doing this on every single point. I'm going to show you guys one of my little rickety sheets. Don't take it off the screen yet, please, Brad. I'm going to okay. show you guys a sheet on a sale that I made with at the last week um, on Miss um, Astralene is the lady. I'll call her Miss Qualls because that's her last name. But what happened was I did the life acronym. Um, I did the life acronym. And as I was talking to her, she wanted to be cremated. Well, as we started talking and I started going through this, the life acronym, and I mentioned education, she goes, well, I would like to leave something for my four grandkids. And it organically took that sale from about 60, 70 a month to 113, 71. It wasn't me saying you needed more coverage. It was her based off of me asking the questions on this form. The second thing that I wanted to add, so again, you guys, uh, the L is for loans, the I is income or income replacement, that obviously when the other significant other passes away, F is final expense, and then E is education. You always want to ask those questions because that's how you're driving your ticket up and it's them saying what they want, not you. The last thing that, that Brad, you did absolutely exceptional on here, and we should be doing this on every single sale, is giving them a gold, silver, and a bronze, covering a percentage of what their needs are. You see he has 200, he has 175, he has 125. Now, Brad, I don't know if you made this sale or not, yeah, what we did. Here, case, yeah, so here, which one here, did they take? Here's what the conclusion was. Alan took the 200000 because he makes more money, the income replacement. That was, again, I recommended that he have a little more coverage because his income replacement is a little more significant. And what we did was we found their budget to be around 250 a month. So she took 175 for herself and he took the 200 and I said, you can always adjust this. You know, we can look at, you know, bumping this up if you guys get into a financial situation where you want a little more coverage or whatever changes, but, uh, but let's put something in place. So we got them covered for, if you, if you put those two together, 200 and 175, 375 of coverage, more than the 359 because they understood and it's based on what you put together here. Yeah. And yeah, it's because just they understood the question. value. Yeah, exactly. The value that they, that you just walked them through the process. Tim laughs at me when I say this. You started with a blank sheet of paper and you let them paint their own canvas with their information. And then you just show them their information and then let them make the selection. The reason I figured you were gonna say they both took the middle, that's what most people do, you guys. Most people are gonna pick right in the middle because it makes them feel comfortable. They don't feel like they're spending too much, but they also don't feel like psychologically they're spending too little or they don't wanna be at the bottom. And the answer to that is, hey, most of the time when I sit down with people, that's exactly what they do. The brand, and I don't ever say the husband or the wife, the breadwinner, is usually picks the, the bigger of the two and using the other spouse picks the one in the middle. Always compliment them. Excellent job, Brad. Any right, questions question. for Brad? Yeah, yeah, question. yeah, go ahead. Hey, go Brad, ahead. what do you think? What, what are they, what were they wanting initially? What? They had no idea. Wow. Wow. They were, That's yeah, why yeah, this yeah. is important. They were, in yeah. their, they were in their early forties, two boys, um, like 12 and 10, 12 and nine, somewhere around there. They knew they needed something, uh, mm -hmm. but they didn't have really an idea. And so, and again, this is one of those people at the very end, they're like, thank you so much. We had no idea. We feel so much better, not only on our education of life insurance, but we feel so much better that we have something in place now. So they just uh, wanted final expense was, initially? What's that? They just wanted final expense initially? Yeah, it was, a, it was an instant internet life lead. They wow. just wanted to cover some burial final expense stuff. They didn't know. They genuinely didn't know. So they were looking like 20,000, maybe 30. They had no idea. Yeah. Wow. So Thank I'm going to pitch this out there. Thanks, Brad. And great question. Mm -hmm. Rick. Yeah, good question. Uh, and I know I say this all the time. And, and I know you guys that prepare before you go into appointments. That's fantastic. And, and maybe you should do that. I should probably do more of that. Brad, if you want to take your screen off, that would be fantastic. Yeah. And give me yeah. back the, the screen. Excellent training, uh, Brad.
Hey, Corey, I had, I had a question for Brad right quick. This is Gregory. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, go ahead, Gregory. Sorry. Go ahead. No, um, yeah, go ahead. Brad, great, great training buddy, as always. Um, just one question. At the bottom, you had those three numbers. I know that uh, 30, I know it was cash back off, but what were the three the um, the three options for? I, I didn't, I, I've done it. 275 and 125. 200,000, yeah, 175, 125. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The, okay, the amounts. Okay, cool. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you bet. And guys, I present that as gold, silver, platinum. You could say ABC, one, two, three, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, and because like you'll say that a lot of times, they'll go, you know what? I, I want the platinum plan. Okay. Whatever makes you feel good, right? But that kind of simple stuff works. Excellent job, Brad. So yeah, I just bye. grabbed a sheet just because I wanted to, sh I'm, I like to show instead of tell. But you can see, forget my chicken scratch, there's four, four kids on there. Okay. This is the lead. Just like I was telling you about. Her name's Miss Qualls. She said she wanted 20000 You see that? I went in. I know this is a final expense lead. I don't care if it's final expense or I don't care what type of lead it is. When I go and sit down, when you start asking them the questions off the LIFE acronym, you think it's final expense, but then it turns into an education plan. She only needed 5000 7000 for her burial. But it ended up being thirty thousand and one hundred thirteen dollars when it was started. It added, it was going to be seventy something. But as I started going through the life acronym, she said, "Well, I would like to leave, you know, a couple thousand to each one of my grandkids." She gave me all of their information. I wrote the information down. I went back and refigured it. One thirteen seventy one. Where if I'd have went in and just think, "Oh, it's final expense," she just needs twenty grand. I would have went in and so twenty grand. It it gave her a reason to say, "I need more because of." X, right? It's not my reason, it's hers. Excellent, excellent, excellent training, Brad. Anything else anybody would like to add or have, have any questions for Brad? I'm going to show you guys two more things and we will be out of here in just a few minutes. Yeah, I'd like to add this, man. I really appreciate this training. Um, Brad, you position yourself as an expert. <laughs> Hard so to, yeah, to yeah, them, yeah. To them, this yeah. just being real, I know you're modest, but um, I appreciate this training because to go in with that kind of uh, acumen, that kind of knowledge, to people who just had no clue about what they wanted to do, and they would, they show their appreciation because you and this training and you, you know, conveyed it to us to make us experts in the home. And so I'm, I'm writing this stuff down and I appreciate it. We go in armed with knowledge. We go in armed with information to pass on to our clients, to help families, to help them make, you know, great course decisions in their life. And um, yeah, this is good. And I appreciate it. Thanks. Awesome. It's good training. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Brad. Mark, it's here, my friend. All right. It's here. It's here, Mark. Going There's right there. I'm going to move that one. See that? There it is. Awesome. Thank you. It, you're very welcome. Tim's going to be coming up here because we're going to Vegas next. I'm going to give out tons of these, you guys. These are pretty nice. And then I got Braden's over there somewhere. We got to get the first female right there. Got the queen on the wall. Got to get it taken care of. I'm hoping to have to buy a bunch of these things. But Mark, congratulations. You Thank guys, uh, $74,632 submitted in a 13 rolling week and now he's on to the next stage of the program that the leadership team has put together so that's simply outstanding um it's awesome mark congratulations yeah, appreciate congratulations, you, everything mark. you're doing you. um you inspire a lot of people and i mean it probably doesn't seem like a big deal to you but i talked to a lot of people throughout the week and you know, how does somebody do they just go to work you guys it's nothing special it's nothing special i'd like to say mark is special but it's nothing special, guys. You buy the leads. We all go through the crap, right? And the people that hang up and yell at us, cuss, and then we go and sit down with somebody and have an absolute fantastic time with somebody, meet a great yeah. person, and protect their family and their legacy. So that's what this, all this is. So, Mark, uh, I'm going to be the first to tell you, this thing's on here a little crooked. It was late when I stuck it on there. So it's, you might have to pull it and re-glue it. But uh, that's anyway, okay. it came out really nice. I know you'll fix it. Take care of it. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to show you guys uh, what Brad was talking about here in just a second. This is on our website. Thank you, Brad, for giving me uh, control back. And then I'll uh, play our little motivational video and then we'll keep this thing moving. So you guys still got my screen here? Can you see my screen? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, we see it, we see it. Yeah, okay, good. So you guys can look at the top there. FFL Genesis is our new site. If you go to Family First Life Premiere, um, it's probably only gonna be up for about probably the next five to seven days. So if you go out there, it's gonna, it's gonna show up as a site doesn't exist. Just to let you guys know. Yeah, it wasn't on there yesterday when I looked. <laughs> Absolutely, so yeah, now you gotta go to FFL Genesis. I'll post it again on Slack, uh, if just if you guys forget. You can see the video over here on the left. That is Tim Nolan. 
Um, that's the video. If you scroll about seven minutes and 30 seconds into that video, he covers the life acronym, but which Brad did a much more eloquent job, but not to pick on Tim. I mean, he was asked to do it right there on the spot and wasn't ready. But so that's that. The other part that we uh, that I wanted to show you guys is this tool. I actually use this pretty much if I get into a final expense because it's just like the life acronym. It's not you saying it, it's they. And let me tell you how important they is when you're in the field. They don't know you, but if it's a third party that you can put right in front of them, that's why I like showing people things because it just makes more sense. And then they start, you gain agreement. This is under the Genesis USA additional resources on our site. And it's the final expense calculator. All you do is click on this. This is actually Great Western site. This is just an average, but it's gonna give them some information. And it's always gonna be a little bit higher than what they think it is, right? So. If somebody's going to be buried, you can see the average cost for all these things. The cool part about this is this is actually live information. So if I scroll down the page and let's say somebody goes, you know what, I'm going to get buried in our, I'm getting buried in our, our, my, our money suit. So I'm going to add the thousand dollars there for their suit. And they're going to have a little service and the church is going to take care of, you know, the ladies or the gentlemen helping, but they're actually going to have to pay for the food. Somebody is. So we're going to add 500 bucks into that. We'll leave everything else the same. I'm going to hit calculate funeral expense. I'm going to click uh, gender and then I'm going to put their age in. Let's just say they're 77. I'm going to hit estimate and it's going to give you an estimate of what the funeral cost is based on the information you put in there. Here's the cool thing about this. Some people will go, oh, I'm just, anytime somebody hits me with the pre need, I always, oh, I'm just going to do pre. I'm like, well, here's the deal, which you don't understand about that. If you don't pay it all up front or you're making monthly installments, you're only going to get what you've paid for. So if you do actually go out and get your prenate next week and it's 150 bucks a month and you pay three months and you've paid in, what is that, 450 bucks that you've paid into it and you pass, you're going to get $450 worth of coverage. So good luck in them shoving you in a, <laughs> a casket that's only about 25% of the size it needs to be, right? That was a joke. Then you have the final expense insurance. You have all this other stuff. But what it also does is it starts talking about inflation. And it gives you a place of strength, as you were just talking about, Rick, of looking like an expert. This is a third party. It's them saying it, not you. Does that make sense? Hopefully I didn't lose you guys again. All right. And then the last thing is you can do the exact same thing with cremation. You can make any adjustments that you want to make in here. You see it automatically adjust and take some of the costs out because there's certain things that aren't needed. And you just go in, you put the age and all that. You can see the, the premium went down. We'll say female. Now, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, women live seven years longer than us on average. <clears throat> That's usually why the men need more coverage and all that kind of stuff to make sure things are taken care of. But I'm going to put age 70 and then you can see the difference of the amounts there. So if you read through this in five minutes, you'll be, you'll be coming from a place of strength. All right. Very good. Any questions as we move through? All right. Let's get this video going and get you guys on about your day. All right. I have one question. Sure. Fire away. How does, are we, are we still in the month of April till next Wednesday or is it over Friday or uh, tracking weeks go, Great question. So our weeks go, they end on Wednesday right. and this is week number five for April. Okay. So I'm going to verify that because I know they told us Mark, which March was a five week month and it wasn't, I know for sure April is, but I'm going to shoot an email just to find out. And then I'll put that on our leadership flag. Corey, April started on a Thursday. So this would have to be the fifth week starting yesterday. It is. Yeah. Yes. It, Go Corey, it goes by the, um, last Thursday it, of the month. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It goes by the submit, um, so yes, what you're basically saying, Mark, is correct. So uh, the first was the first Thursday, then the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th is yesterday. So this technically is a five-week submit week in yeah. April. Correct. So what it does is the very first day of the week is that Thursday in FFL world. So Thursday the 1st, Thursday the 8th, Thursday the 15th, and 22nd, and then yesterday the 29th. We'll start the fifth week of Thursday. That's correct. Yep. yep. Perfectly explained. Exactly right. You good, Mark? I'm good. That, that's perfect. All right. Perfect. All right. Here we go, ladies and gents. Make sure you guys can hear this.
if you want to be the best, you must outwork the rest. It goes without saying, the greatest work harder than the rest. They train harder. They learn more. They put themselves through more pain, more failures, more no's, more rejections. If your opponent does 10, you do 11. If they do 11, you do 12. If they do 12, you do 13, 14, 15. Sure, some of the greatest have talent, but none of that talent would ever be realized as greatness if they didn't put in the work. On the other side, think of all those with little talent that have created magic with effort. Effort will get you whatever you want in life. Fighting spirit, that's what I'm talking about. That heart that you know is inside you, you just gotta let it out to keep going when life has you on the canvas. When everything seems to be conspiring to stop you, to hold you back, but you say no, you say not today. The strength to fight back, the heart to fight through challenges, and the determination to smash through unexpected obstacles. If you want more than most, you must work harder than most, work smarter than most, learn more than most, get up one more time, more than most. Kind of goes in line of what we were talking about earlier. I should say, I was talking about earlier this morning about doing what it takes, putting in that extra effort. I know I talked to Kathy the other day and it's just getting that 1% better every single time you go out. Every person you sit with, every time you go through the presentation, getting 1% better, you'll start having those weeks like Mark and you'll be able to do that in two or three days and really turn your life around financially. And I can tell you financially, when your financial life is in order, everything else just for some reason just seems to fall in place. I don't know why it works that way. It just does. So I'm very thankful for you guys. Uh, we are Team Genesis now, which I'm very humbled and thankful for. Um, God works in mysterious ways. I just, uh, I, I'm a huge, huge, huge dreamer, thinker. It was hard to keep my feet on the ground most of the time. And I'm absolutely blown away by the, what the spot that we're in right now is we're continuing to grow. And it's amazing to hear other people start to get into the leadership team. Other people start to come on and do the things that they want to do with this and really see, truly see the opportunity, not just financial, but the people we can help. And then with the backside of this thing is for those that want to build teams. So thank you guys so much for all you do. Thank you for your time this morning. Brad, absolutely fantastic job. Mariana, thank you for getting out of bed so early. Have a good day, everybody. If you need anything, guys, you guys know I'm just a phone call away. Have a fantastic day, guys. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. What, what, you guys, what time do you guys meet on Wednesdays for team building? Eight o'clock, same place. Saturdays is 8.30. Thanks. And it's on Slack. You'll see it on Slack. I, I post it on Slack, so you'll see it. All right. Same All right, Corey, guys. thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Have